God, our Father, we come tonight in a world upset with turmoil and threats of danger, and in a country following tragedy upon tragedy. So we pray tonight for a peaceful and gentle spirit. Let this time of work for our area be a time of true concern for one another. Let our deliberations truly be enlightened by your guidance. Let everything that we do be directed by your holy will that we come doing what is right for ourselves and for one another. Give us your peace and your gentleness. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Are there any additions to the agenda? I did put one on uh, Dakota's here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, under mine, uh, we're a swimming pool manager. I need to add uh, assistant manager. Sorry. With that? Uh, swimming pool manager. Yeah. And assistant manager. I'd like to add one more under Mel 06, uh, Rattlesnake Creek. Discussion. I've got one more. Yes. Um, donation to the police department. The police department or fire department? Police department okay. from the fireman's auxiliary. Okay. Community Involvement Program. Mates 10, Tom Hodges 4, Jerry Munden 2, Susan Tucker 2, Joe Gillette 1. For City Council, Sherry Williamson 170, Mark Bryant 145, Rodney R. Christman 44, Bob 2 31, Bright Ends, Carl Staub Jr. 9, Amy Collins 1, Trish Coleman 1, Jerry Long 1, and a total of 220 votes were cast in the City of St. John. City Council, I would like to thank Amy as council person and Jill as mayor for all your hard work. Thank and you. We purchased these nice leather <laughs> Angus. <laughs> Angus. So 
Well, the power best of me. Thank you for your hard work. Thank, thank you. you. Of the state of Kansas and faithfully discharge the duties of mayor and faithfully discharge the duties of mayor. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. And Sherry and Mark. Of the state of Kansas, and faithfully discharge the duties of council member, and faithfully discharge the duties of council member. So help me God. So help me God. system that we use for the Jubilee in the square. And I prepared a little note so I can give you a little background and reasoning for why I'm asking, what I will be asking of the council. Uh, as many of you do know, I volunteer my time during the Jubilee as sound person and MC. Um, and I come before you today that I'm going to be making a, re a request regarding the sound system. It's a simple request that I believe will severely enhance the overall experience of the visitors that attend our annual celebration. And you do all know that we are a small community, but that doesn't mean anything. We do have a big tradition here. Uh, like I said, I've been doing this, and now I think it's up to close to 10 years. I've assisted and I finally took over, and I hear the same comments um, about not being able to hear what's going on. And some of these comments do come from elderly people who are a lot of our audience, um, our crowd, but I do hear the same comments from all age groups. And I've come to the realization that the clearest way to solve this issue is to beef up our current system versus go out and purchase something new with worth thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, the original sound system that we do have was originally put together by Omar Norton and Bill Clausing. But by doing this, I believe we can enhance the overall experience by making it easier to hear, and it should cut down confusion. I do believe that people don't tend to stick around down on the square for these events because they don't know what's going on. They can't hear, they don't know, oh, the ice cream, they can read the schedule, but as they're busy and they can't hear things, they, you know, I 
I, I didn't know that was going on. So I hear all these comments. But I think that this is a good start to help better the situation. <coughs> I've done some research, and I found the best way, or at least what I think is the best way, to kind of boost what we currently have. Um, it'll enhance our surround sound kind of experience in the square. Um, I've talked to very experienced people on this matter and some pro audio professionals to make sure that this equipment that we would be getting to enhance what we have um, would be compatible with what we already do have. And I'm definitely welcome to any questions that you would have with this. I believe Jonna uh, handed out the uh, proposed items. We could use the cornwall sign for this. You know, we had talked about that before. If we were going to replace the whole system, it was um, quite a bit more money to replace it. So the guys had decided not to. But Dakota came in and, and brought this to my attention. I thought it was a, a good idea to bring it to the table and see what you thought. So this will bring your total speaker number to four. Four total speakers versus the two that we are currently putting on each side of the stage, which only really covers a, that quadrant, unless we blow everyone out of that quadrant to reach the rest. With the higher quality speakers, that we, they would be a powered speaker, which we could run the line to them in automatic power built-in amps, and they provide a higher quality sound. And they are also high enough technology that if there were any further upgrades in the future, that they would, wouldn't be out of style, you know, in the next, I mean, so uh, with the kind of talk that we've had, uh, that I've had with Jonna and Mel about positioning and making sure that people wouldn't be tripping over cords and stuff, we've already kind of, you know, had talked about those <coughs> two, and so it would bring us up to four total speakers. Or are these uh, covered by any type of warranty? I was noticing uh, there was coverage right here. You've got there is a there is a uh, fact the factory warranty that that comes with them if they if they are shipped to us or picked up and they you know have a manufacturer's defect. There's also um, some coverage that you can put on, put on them through you know uh, this particular quote that I got through was Guitar Center. Uh, they're pretty big. Pro Audio. Uh, when I was with the band, that's where we did a lot of our business with, and they were really, really knowledgeable. Um, they do have their own pro coverage that uh, you can see there. There are three years worth or two years worth that you can add on for any kind of accidental damage. Say if we were transporting them over there from here, and they dropped it off the truck, it'd be covered. So I mean, if that was, you know, an option. I, I put that there as well. Does that cover anything like Mother Nature created? I believe looking at... Uh, it doesn't really say to me, but... Yeah, the accidental damage from handling. Um, I believe there's another... Failures due to heat, dust, and yeah. internal humidity, but... Yeah, there... There is External another on the overview and how it work how it works page. I didn't print those off, okay. so you can go to the net, yeah, and so there would be more information there as well. So it would be covered. Say Mother Nature did something. Else? I believe so. I'm not. I am not going to say 100 percent, but I do believe so. Is this something that we take down to go to ever when we get done with them? Or is yes. It yes. Up all the time? We in. We install them, you know, well not install them, but we get them out of the closet in the main lobby of the building here, and the city guys help us get those over there and set them up, and and, uh, and then we bring them back every night and put them away, and then get them back out for the next day, so. Well, I'd make a motion to purchase with the three-year additional pro coverage. A lot cheaper alternative than one yeah. that fast. Yeah. This total deal is going to be $15.99.98, correct? Plus the coverage. Plus the coverage, and then um, I don't know how, how it works with tax, I don't believe. 
Do we have to buy this additional 20 foot cord also? This would be. That the 2199 or what? The two, there would be two cables needed to be able to run them from the board to, the, to get sound to them. The power cords are included. Um, but the, the, you have to get the sound from the board to the actual speaker, so those would be, we would need to buy those. So, so we'll need two of them? Okay. Two of those. That'd be another $44. How much is the warranty? $29.99. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. All second for this motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you, Dakota. Thank you. Thank you. So the extra cables too. Yeah. Fifteen ninety-nine and then the forty-four for the cables. What was the total that you came up with? Eighteen seventy-four. That's the two twenty-foot cables. The sound system, the speakers, and the speakers. Three years. is um, fundamentally some, some grant opportunities that I see on the horizon for um, housing development. But I thought it would also be just a good time to update the council on what kind of um, things economic development has been doing to try to prepare for some of these, these opportunities. Um, one of the main big things that we've done in the last year is to conduct a formal housing um, profile and needs assessment for the county. Uh, it's a pretty, I think, thorough document. Um, we used a combination of uh, public sources and direct surveys. We used a template provided by the Federal Home Loan Bank, which allowed us to do, I think, a pretty uh, thorough and, and professional analysis by just following that template and, and avoiding having to um, contract that kind of thing out. Um, there are companies that do that, but we were able to save some money and do it in-house. Um, it quantifies what housing exists, um, demographic data for the county, and, and what kind of housing is most needed. Um, like I said, it takes from a lot of public sources. We used information from the appraiser's office, census, um, Social Security Administration, um, Department of Commerce, and like I said, we did this direct surveying too to kind of um, verify that that data was statistically um, to be accurate, and um, we found that it was. So, what we found, 2,067 houses in the county. The average age is 82 and really now 83 years old. Um, we're 3% of our housing stock in the county has been built in the last 20 years, and 80% of it ranks in less than good condition according to an appraiser's scale. So, overall, we can characterize our housing as aging and deteriorating. 92% um, is occupied. That's slightly higher than the state average. 78% um, is owner-occupied versus 67% statewide. Um, we, we weigh heavy in, in terms of ownership. Um, the converse of that is that we are we have much a percentage of renters than the state does. 21% here versus 31% statewide. Looking at the rental situation in particular, um, of those uh, houses, 413 were are renter occupied, deemed to be renter occupied, but 120 of those were designed as rental properties. So a lot of the rental property that we have has kind of fallen into that, I guess you could say, in, in ways other than it was purposely built to be a rental property. Um, we have 77 retirement units and 8 hou HUD housing units and 35 units in duplexes, triplexes, and quadplexes. 
Um, our rental situation is a little tighter than it is statewide. Um, our vacancy rate is 5.5% compared to 8.4% statewide. I think you're never going to have zero. It's just like unemployment. But we have um, a smaller vacancy rate than, than average. And um, the average rent, according to the census, um, and this one's hard to verify totally by survey, but um, according to the census, our average rent is $288 countywide. So, um, per month, right? Per month. All right. Um, looking at the demographic profile of the, of the population, our median household income is 42000 And HUD defines affordable housing as less than 30% of your household income spent on, um, on housing. Inferring from that, affordable housing would be 875 a month. I know that that's aggressive in terms of what prevailing rents are. Um, currently, we estimate about 50% or 50 percent of people spend less than 15% on housing. Um, what we all took from this, too, is that our greatest void in housing is targeted toward young professionals or young families, workforce housing. It's not low-income housing. It's when we're working with, um, I'll give you my, one of my latest examples. Um, a uh, person interested in participating in the Rural Opportunity Zone um, inquired to the county. Uh, he, by way of background, the Rural Opportunity Zone is a state program that Stafford County is included in that is um, providing incentives to young professionals to locate in the counties that have lost the most population over the decade of 2000 to 2010. So we were one of those counties, and the, that incentive um, provides some student loan repayment incentives, or if they're moving in from out of state, they can qualify for a state income tax waiver for five years. Um, we had an inquiry to that program. He came and visited, and I took him around town and introduced him to people and just showed him the town. Um, there was a, an attorney here that was interested in possibly transitioning his business. And uh, the man wrote me back after he said, I, ha I had a good experience. I'm, I'm interested. I have some concerns mainly housing. So I see that as one of the barriers that we have to um, recruiting young young professional families. There's one anecdote I could I could give you several others, but um, um, and, and you know when I've gone to economic development meetings around the state, it is a common theme. All of the rural western Kansas counties are dealing with the same thing. They're saying there's housing programs out there that are targeted to, toward low income or retirement. That's not what we need, though. We need <coughs> workforce housing. We need we need the stuff that <coughs> school teachers, you know, can can um, afford and qualify for. You know, another was in a neighboring school district, but didn't have another anecdote was that a, one of our school districts uh, in the county hired 2000 or 2011, 2010 or 11 hired four professionals that year, none of them located within the school district for lack of funding housing options. So why is EcoDigo involved? So there you go. It's needed to support the goals of increasing our population and our tax base. And in the last year, um, economic development has gotten its 501c3 designation. Um, our application to the IRS as a C3, which is a charitable de designation, was that um, in this context, economic development combats community decline. It's not like Johnson County or something. You know, it is charitable by combating community decline in this context. The IRS agreed, gave us our C3, and furthermore, we made the case that housing development is an integral part of that community decline combating purpose. Not limited to low to moderate income, or not limited to low income definitions. There's a lot of housing. Um, nonprofits that are out in existence that qualify to be charitable because they are serving an indigent population. And in our case, we're not limited to that. We could. We could do that if that was needed, definitely. But we would look at those opportunities too, but we're not required to be limited to that in order to meet our charitable purpose. So, um, we are really trying to make that a priority in the coming year. Um, the Economic development was able to acquire one lot at the uh, 
county tax sale last fall. It happened to be in Maxville. We had lots identified in Stafford and St. John that we were interested in, but for various reasons, other bidders got them. Um, but we fully intend to be active in all parts of the county. Um, but since we got that house or that lot in Maxville first, that's, probably, that's the one we'll, be, we'll work on first. We've got um, some financing in place through our own operating budget, and we've applied for two other grants that could help us more fully um, finance that without having to borrow. Um, but one way or another, that is the, the plan is to build one and kind of approve prove our process and, and ability to do this. Um, and then continue to look for finance or funding that will help us move on to Stafford and, and St. John. In particular, there's two programs that I've got um, my eyes set on, I guess. One of them is the Moderate Income Housing Program. This is a new program through the Kansas Housing Resources Corporation um, last year. It, I think, was deemed to be a very good program. There's a lot of competition for a little bit of money. And the legislature at this point does have it included in the budget again this year. So I um, got some feedback on the application that was submitted last year, some things that could improve it, and uh, was told to be persistent, <laughs> and plan to apply again in, um, I expect that to be in August or so. Um, and the scope of funding that that could provide would be a maximum of 400000 so could, could definitely provide some good resources to make headway on this. I recently became aware of another opportunity, which I, <coughs> last year it was due in July, so I um, had been planning on that timing of it. It's this year due in May, so I'm now really focusing on putting that application together, but it is a community service tax credit program. It's also through the state of Kansas and can provide up to $250,000 in tax credits, which would translate to $330,000 in actual cash funds. Um, but uh, our application, it, it can, that program can fund an array of activities. It's not a housing program per se, but again, since we um, are a, an organization with the purpose of combating community decline, community development, the community service aspect of this application, I'm hoping will um, make us a program for that. So, um, so I hope looking at working with the city that we're addressing a, a mutual concern. Um, what I uh, would be asking for in terms of the, the support is not any cost to the city, no budgeting required, um, no responsibility for project management or anything. Um, but I am asking for at a minimum a letter of endorsement. Um, or to include in the grant applications. Um, and I think that you might have had in your packet a copy of the letter that was sent last year for the Moderate Income Housing Program. And it did make reference to being open to some oh, no, It wasn't in the packet. No. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I have a copy of it that I could. They probably did see it last year when they did approve it last year. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you want me to read the whole thing, but it's, it's letter to express the City of St. John's support for Stafford County's application. It makes the case of why housing is um, needed um, and that we have had some growth in that. I might make that note. We have had a little bit of growth as far as at least, at least measured by school enrollment. Our school enrollment was up slightly this year. And um, in fact, it was in all three school districts, which it's the first time since 1996-97, which I was the time frame I easily could research. It's probably been longer than that, but all three school districts in the same year had a bump up in enrollment. So, that's all economic development or not, I'm, I'm going to take it. Um, so, you know, there may not be a single significant business expansion, but there's been a incremental growth through several smaller things. And so to take from this letter, it says the City of St. John does not have cash funds to contribute, but we do support this effort and will provide in-kind support such as utility hookups or curb improvements. So we could word that in some way that doesn't make a specific obligation if you're comfortable with that, but leaves it open that the city can be supported in an in-kind way as 
your resources permitted or some such. Um, so that's, that's the short of it. Um, letters of support for the uh, nature of any questions. Are you utilizing local builders, tradesmen to do the project in Maxville? We have not actually given bids yet. We have tried to work with a local person in terms of doing the drafts work. We, and we have, um, you know, that our purpose is economic development locally, so we want to support local people to the extent that we can. Um, we also have to be, consider competitive bids and right. things too, so. <coughs> um, you know, one of the things that I was given feedback on for what would make our moderate income housing application more competitive. So they're looking at a, I had submitted something um, assuming the cost of the duplex could be accomplished for about 150000 They're looking for um, a benchmark of about 50000 per unit. It's extremely impressive. Um, I have done, you know, some research. I've ended up getting some um, spreadsheets from some developers in the Kansas City area. And of course, they're dealing with the efficiencies of big volume and so forth. But they're doing it at 48,000. I've seen spreadsheets on how it breaks down the cost by a 48,000 unit. So I, we may have to get creative and, um, you know, to accomplish that in, in an area where we aren't dealing with that kind of volume. Um, and use some in-kind labor. We've looked into the possibility. No, I mean, I don't know if I should even say it in public because it's only a possibility at this point, but um, there's a program through Larded State Hospital that can give some in-kind labor and we may consider some things like that if we need to to stretch our cash funds. The first project will be our one where we work out the bugs on it for sure. So you need that letter approved or redrafted tonight. Is that 48000 for a deploy? Per unit, so, so tonight, twice that. Programs, a little sure that both those programs, so she, the one in August as well, which is the one you already did last year. Yes, so would you prefer? Yeah, I mean, I, I would substantially change the letter. And you just re reapply, don't you? Right. Hmm? right. Anything to do with housing, I huh? can't see why you wouldn't want to go. I'll second that motion. Do we have to change the wording as far as you said, changing it maybe to where it was less descriptive of what we agreed to do or whatever? Well, <coughs> I I don't know how willing, how open you are to a specific commitment of in-kind, say, site preparation or some curb improvements or something like that. If, if you're comfortable being more specific with that commitment, I would. Well, I didn't know if we needed to just kind of wipe out the specifics in it, or if it helps you to be specific. I mean, if, if it helps, I mean, because that opens us up to more than maybe what we just say, too, if we leave it unopened. Specific's always better when you're asked, when it's showing what support you're going to give. So spe specific is better. Okay, and we, we put on there what last time, I guess? Um, you put. The City of St. John does not have cash funds to contribute, but we do support this effort and will provide in-kind support such as utility hookups and curb improvements. That doesn't necessarily um, hold us to concrete. We can just, we could do the dirt work and whatever to improve the area without having to actually lay concrete. Right. In the past, Mel has already offered to remove the sidewalk if someone wants to replace it. That is part of our service. service. So, that's fine. Just want to leave it the way it is. Here. Okay. 
So if it works for you. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. So I'll work with John and Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Colonel. Did everybody get one of these? I don't remember how many copies I brought down to Donna. I made some extras, um, so you should have had them in the package. And then, yeah. But I do have some extras here. And then, um, Sherry and Julianne, if you did or did not get these. Okay. If you had a chance to read them or not, all really the only reason I'm here tonight is just to kind of uh, sort of just remind you, you know, that you got this and, and what it is. And this is really just a very basic idea of what we might want to do. It's not something that we're proposing. It's not something that we're asking on a boat or anything like that. But it just gets kind of a starting point of kind of the things we're talking about. Getting, getting re resolved with this whole issue. So, um, if there's any okay, explanation the to it. Of those of us who are there you go. Yeah. just starting this evening, could you maybe catch us up or go back a little bit and give us an idea of what's taken place or what's brought us to this point? Basically, what we're, we, and I say we as a county, the County Fire Department and the County Emergency Services Operation, um, we want to make the least amount of duplication. We want to try to um, be, have, have a really efficient operation. You know, we don't want to have a piece of equipment just because we might need it. Especially if there's another piece of equipment over here that we might be able to use. You know, there, it just doesn't make sense to buy something that sits right next to it or Things like that. So um, one of the big things we're looking at actually is that large yellow truck that sits here in St. John. Um, it's a East Coast engine, fire engine, pumper, whatever you want to call it. Um, it. It was an idea of a previous employee of the counties to purchase that for rural firefighting. It's not really a great idea. I mean, in my mind, I can't make it seem like it's a good idea in my mind. Now they, they may have had a much better idea about that truck, but that's just one of the uh, one of the things that we're talking about is, is kind of that kind of stuff that we don't necessarily want to do. If it's not a good idea, then we don't want to do it. So what we're wanting to do is um, take three cities down on the south end of the county that already have structure firefighting operations in place and uh, expand on their um, rural response. There is already a rural response in place, and I, I to structure know, fires. To structure fires. I don't know how much. Uh, I cannot remember that distance right now. But what we would be talking about would be a corridor system. It would actually mirror what EMS is, and so it just splits the county into thirds. And so if there was a house fire in St. John's corridor, then uh, St. John, and it would be up to between the city and the fire chief of that individual town to decide on the details of that. But say they would send their backup or something with a couple personnel. And then those two people would team up with the firefighters. Um, it would just it allow us not to have to maintain and um, own the structure equipment. So is part of the end goal to get rid of the big yellow truck and replace it with something that you guys feel is more suitable to yes. the area? Yes. Um, I wish, you know, and I probably should have done this, I wish I would have ran a report the last few years on county structure fires, you know, rural structure fires. It's going to show a little bit of difference there because a structure fire is anything that is a structure. Now, we've got house fires or structure fires that could have been saved in the rural county areas? Oh, I can't think of, off the top of my head, I can't think of any um, that have happened in the last four or five years. And I mean, that's just, I, I could very well be missing something. But So it's not that, you know, it happens all the time. 
but it very well could happen, and it could happen at any given time. So we definitely want to plan, but we don't want to completely leave the whole county without a structure response. But um, currently, our response for county structure fires can go to staff. So if somebody in southeast Stafford County has a structure fire, they got to wait on it to come out of St. John. It would be much closer for Stafford to run that one. Same thing, you know, St. John would be St. John, but. Um, so have you spoken with the city departments in Stafford and Maxville? And yes. I'm assuming that they are on board with this as we well. Have, we had, and we had another chief's meeting last night, and we were discussing some more, kind of the little fine details of what, what the chiefs themselves are, are um, comfortable with and things that they may want to do or um, kind of how they want to handle you know, some of the details. And, and a lot of that's in here. Now, none of it's concrete. And none of it's, you know, specifically we want to do this. And it's just, it's just an idea of a starting point. So, Thank you. I believe that all the county fire chiefs are on, on board to have said otherwise. We brought this up at staff and city council meeting last Monday night, and it was, uh, there was, they had to vote because it wasn't a final plan, but they, they were directed to develop a final plan and they're on board with doing a quarter on the third of the eastern end of the response and as far as that quarter. And that's, I think, what Stafford was, you know, at, at first they thought Steve was coming to ask them, hey, make a decision. You know, I want you to, to vote on this right here. And that's not what this is. We would like you guys actually to go over this and come up with your ideas, you know, and then it's it's going to have to be written up, I'm guessing, by by a, an attorney of some sort, whether who, whomever it be. Um, but this is just a starting point. Something to give you guys ideas of maybe some of the things that need to be thought about, maybe some of the things that need to be talked about. And do you have guys have a time frame in mind as to when you may have this finalized? Are we looking no. at a couple of months? Are we looking at six we, months? Are we looking we at a year? A couple of months versus. You know, six or more, but no, no solid, no solid time frame. It's just we don't really want to stretch it out as, as you know, very long. It's one of those things that it's gonna be nice to get it, get it done, and just kind of get it in place. What What are you thinking when you get rid of your yellow truck? What are you going to purchase? Uh, there's really no plans to purchase anything at the moment. Uh, if we do purchase something to replace the yellow truck, it's going to have to be something that we absolutely need. Um, mostly it's going to be potentially a water source. You know, that seems to be our biggest issue on fires, is that uh, we just don't have much for water source. Although we did just get four large trucks, and I think that is, I think it's really going to uh, help us. Um, a couple of those just replaced two and a half, you know, so it's the same amount of water, but but we are increasing that water that we have a little bit. So I think we'll see some benefit out of that. But um, it just, and, and each year has been different too. Each year we've needed something different, kind of. You know, it's, but drought, Stafford County, and fires, <laughs> they seem to be reoccurring. So explain, explain to me what you're exactly wanting. That seems to change. On this, yeah. we want you guys basically to help us fight structure fires in the county. That's what we want. And, and we will be responsible for, I mean, on the very last page, if you look down on the very last page, it's going to tell you what the county's going to be responsible for and what the city's going to be responsible for. And those are right? the things that need discussion. Right. Yeah. But right now, the county has provided everybody with structure gear. They have provided which is about 1,200, right? 12, more than that? What was that? Total, 22. If you, if you count the, the turnout gear, boots, helmet, yeah, air pack, that's kind of, no, air, pack. Pack. air pack's a little misleading because that's pretty expensive by itself. You could, you could range close to $2,000. But then the air packs, again, are $3,900 a piece, right. which they have also provided to us. So we haven't had to buy any of that. And the bonus was that all that became, you know, was given through a grant. So right. even, you know, but it does outpay. It yeah, does the gear will be, I mean, the gear does have a shelf life on it. So. And that's, that's 
But also one of the things we're thinking about with this is that we have absolutely got to look as a county has to look at what is going to be the best way to start replacing this gear too. Um, you know, we're wanting to make some changes towards that as far as do we need to buy everybody three thousand dollars worth of fire gear? You know, can we just change some of the way we do things a little bit to, to reduce that? And you know, it just takes some time to look at what we're doing, figure it out. But I I personally really want to streamline things as much as I can. Um, I, mean, I I hate to say it, it's kind of I don't know those things that gets going around a lot, but I pay taxes too. It's just one of those things. The fire department is not a money maker in any county. So it, the, the, if you can keep that fire department as, as efficient and streamlined as you can possibly get, you know, it's better for everybody. Is it correct to say that our guidelines state that you don't take any city trucks out of the town now? Five miles. Five miles. Is that what it is? Five? Like, yeah. like, see, I can remember what that distance was. But. And you want to extend that rule to countywide? No, well, not, not necessarily third, countywide. It'd be third. Yeah, our corridor. Mm -hmm. What is our corridor? Oh, what do you want to do? I bet it. I it's, believe it's, it goes. It's, if the ambulance out of St. John got paged to a residence, it'd be the same place the fire truck would. It's about 30th or 40th east, and about. Without a map, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you completely wrong. It's about, but it's about somewhere around miles wide, so it's gonna be in the neighborhood of 50th to 60th um, west. But that's gonna be from county line to county line. So it, it's pretty evenly. Maxville gets the smallest section because they've got the big cutout in the corner. But it's pretty much east to west. It's thirds, so, and we're about 30 miles wide. So. And you guys always work together to where you leave one fire truck in town. Yeah, right. I mean, we would leave, we would take our backup truck. Yeah, right. We'd never, we, you know, yeah, that's, you know, that's one thing like Stafford and Maxville, you know, have discussed is that, of course, the same thing I think every town is going to talk about is we're well, going to take every single firefighter out of the county or out of their town. Well, no, you know, that's not well, what we want. Would that be enough help if we just rewrite that where you can take your truck to your corridor? That's all we have to do? Potentially. Okay, your backup truck is which one? Yeah. Or Mike? Mike. Would it would be the, is it the last one we purchased. The Seagull? The Seagrays. Seagrays or whatever. Yeah. And the one that you bought, bought new is the primary truck? Yes. What, uh, the Seagull truck, is it what, a diesel? Yeah, they're both diesel. And we currently are paying part of the utilities. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's in there too. Yeah. We've talked. Um, it really doesn't amount to much. But. I know. And that's it's in, in right there. Well, there's one of the things. It's like, okay, if we're asking you guys to help us with structure fire, what can we provide back? I mean, we're not going to just say, hey, can you do this, and thanks for the extra, and not give anything back. That's kind of part of it. What would you like back? I mean, one way. of the things we threw out was, was um, uh, yeah, utilities. That's one of the things we just threw out there. Though. Um, but those are all those things that are up for discussion. And just to kind of read over and see if there's something else, you know, throw it in there and see what. We'd like you to waive our 37% of building rent. <laughs> <laughs> if, if that, if, uh, you know, really, if that's what you wanted to write in there, then, I mean, we're going to do that. That's kind of, I, I can't speak too much. <laughs> My opinion and maybe what I'm authorized is two different things. <laughs> so. I can't get myself in trouble, but you know, I I'm a pretty easy going guy. <laughs> Nick, you had in here that you uh, need to plan for self funding because uh, it you know, it'd be ill advised to plan on getting another grant. Oh, Do you yeah. have plans for any self funding? Absolutely. The county we and that's this is part of that is that um, we really need to make sure we're doing what we 
what we need to do at No More. Because this gear, unfortunately, will, we got a big grant and it came nice brand new gear all at the same time. But on the flip side, it's going to expire at the same time. It's going to expire at the same time. You know, according to NFPA, you know, regulations, what that amounts to is that if somebody gets hurt in that year, they come and pick it up and say, hey, your gear was outdated. Yeah. Gonna pay. Now, is it, is it destroyed? Pretty, yeah, no. You know, so it's, it's something we got to kind of watch is you do got to pay attention to that outdate because legally, if you, if you really, if it really came down to it, yeah, you could probably bankrupt a, a county or a town this size on, on something like that. You need to bankrupt the county just to not outdate everything. You know, so um, that's part of keeping it as streamlined as you can possibly make it, but still offer a fire service. And like you know, Mike was making mention to um, the grants. We got the year grants. We got the SCBA grants. Well, with those, we got a breathing, uh, breathing air compressor. Um, that's about thirty-five thousand dollars or something. You know, there's no reason to duplicate that across the county. We don't, we don't have so many structure fires that we're having to refill bottles all the time. So why can't there be one fill station? Um, most all of the firefighters are city and county both. Uh, so why can't you know SCBA packs be the same with this? With this structure fire, or that structure fire. It's not like they need to be different. Um, there's a lot of things, communication stuff, and what this will help is just to kind of pinpoint exactly what we do do and what somebody else does, and you know, kind of what's expected, I guess. That way, when there is a question, well, now here's the answer because we decided on it instead of well, we're gonna have to figure that one. Try to figure it out now. So. But. To answer both questions, <coughs> basically, we want to help fighting structure fires in the county. Basically. I'm not opposed to moving up five miles to your corridor. I wouldn't be opposed either as long as it's the backup truck that goes and not on our main fire truck. Because if you get out the sand and you tear a truck up, and you tear your good truck up, then you in a pickle. Absolutely. I'm going to just help them. I think we ought to wait before we do anything until we see a final draft of something. Well, yeah. 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 Right. Well, yeah. And actually, yeah. actually this. Yeah. you know, final draft, though, is kind of dependent upon you guys. I mean, getting some feedback back as far as exactly what you would like to see in here. Like Bob says, backup only or things like that. So that's, that's what this is. All this is just an idea for you to get started. Um, if it's completely wrong, then any day we will just we'll see what we can work with, you know. So, that's why I say two months, six months, it'd be better quicker, but just to get it done. But it's probably going to have to come down to some sort of legal counsel to write it, just so it it's worded right. I don't know. I can write something, but it's probably not okay. I'm guessing that's why you pay that gentleman over there to write stuff. This didn't turn out okay. Is this correct? We still owe sixty thousand dollars on that backup truck that Seagull Seagraves that we bought. That's a bond that's outstanding, correct? Yeah. And ninety one hundred on the dump truck. Oh, it's yeah, a dump truck. That's a dump truck. We're talking about part of it. The other one's paid for, right, Tom? Yep. Yeah. The Seagrave we off. just got paid off. Yeah. No. Paid off. No, the Seagrave. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one we The old off. one. The old, the, the backup, for? the backup one's paid for, right? Yeah, yeah. Seagrave we just paid for. No, I mean, we just yeah. paid our last payment on there. Yeah, the 60000 is on the brand new 2003. Yeah, right. that's, that's the new okay. one. Seagrave is, yeah. But it just, like I said, it was just, we made our last payment on it not very long ago. Does it seem to be in pretty good shape, Mike? Yeah. So we both of them are feasible run down road, correct? Yes. I mean, we take them out. Did they both long. have a pump test recently? Yeah. Uh, no. Or just the one? Just the one. The next Which one? The, the new one had the pump test. The C grades will get it next year. Well, I mean, I suppose tonight the only thing I'm actually asking for is just to kind of look this over and come up with some ideas. 
that you would like. I kind of agree with Troy. You kind of give us an idea of what we're doing. I'm not going to see where I would have to be probably. Um, as long as it's understood that it's the backup truck of everything and not the, it, not the new it's, You know, this is kind of something that I've been trying to think about how from this point to the next is going to work. And I really, I don't know. Um, I know you guys you know, only meet at certain times. So is this something that you would all think of individually and bring us ideas? Or, or would you come at your next meeting maybe and say, you know, this is what we think. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how you guys want to go about you know, adding and subtracting and changing. I would say you just set a date when you kind of want our ideas put together and then okay. we just do it. So you would like Whether it's the next meeting or the meeting after that or whatever. Okay. So you would like us to come back and um, set a date to come back and just find well, out? Well, that give you time to go over, I mean, change anything and hear from other people too and kind of give everybody their. Time to think it through and look at look it over. When's this equipment going to come obsolete? The structure here, I think we've got approximately three to five years on the date itself. Okay, if we get on board with this situation, it's going to be up to the county and county alone to buy the new updated equipment, correct? Mm -mm. Am I not? Well, that's one of the things we need to talk about. In this one, I think in this one, the it says the county will be, it, they will take care of the air. And SCBAs, and we will be in charge of St. John's gear. Right. The gear for. Right. St. John would be responsible for their gear, which basically their, their is what gear, St. Uh, well, John Fire Department would be responsible for. Them. Yes. Yeah. It, you know, and it, it kind of it's really not changing anything that a fire department does, except that a few years ago we got a grant, and the county divvied out a bunch of gear. So it's it's like a shared it's shared gear. Eventually, that shared gear will go away by date or or destruction, whatever it is. So, Nick, you mentioned a chief's meeting. Would it be um, valuable to have a council member or a representative from the city attend one of those meetings with possibly representatives from Maxwell and Stafford to maybe kind of hammer out some details? I I would like um, something of that sort to where if you guys could come up with a committee. You know, or something that way it can all be done like at a, at a given time. You know, maybe that would be a little quicker and easier too. Instead of instead of having to go to three different city council meetings and then the commission meeting, well, that didn't quite work, so we got to change this and bring it back. I mean, that could take a while. I don't know. Maybe a committee of sorts would be better. I don't know, but I, I don't. That's the thing. I don't know about how how the meetings necessarily work and how you guys be able to do that but at our chiefs meetings you know we, we just have to say yeah this next we have a quarterly chiefs meeting and we discuss personnel policies this last time we discussed this you know what what the city chiefs would like to see so we can get that with this. we can nitpick this and get back with you yeah that's Any other questions for me? Explanations of anything? Okay. And just because I leave tonight and you got this in, my, in your hand, I mean, you just call out the office if you have something to or tell Mike or something, you know. If something comes up that you think is really, really important, give us a call. Or something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We, we had a fire meeting last Wednesday and it was brought up to donate money to the police department for the patrol rifles from the firemen's auxiliary, so we decided we would like to do that.
particular items in question? Well, there was no funding issues. No, it's for $75 a piece. Yeah. yeah. It's no funding issue whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what is the issue? I just don't think we need M4, M16s, period, so you go camp. It's not like any of the officers are going to go out doing anything with them. Like the, I've said before, the, uh, I mean, I'd rather they have the equipment and not need it than need, than need the equipment and not have it. The scenario that we've represent got them, me. we've got the fire department wanting to donate money for this, so there's no money out of our pocket. <clears throat> I, I don't really see the problem with it. We just felt that they were already at a disadvantage, and why put them even further at a disadvantage if they ever needed it? The scenario was represented to me was a school down here, and we're going to we got somebody on the other end, north end of the school, mm -hmm. and we're going to shoot an M16. Whose house is lined up in the, in that line of shot? <laughs> M16 is not going to go right down. Depending on where you're looking at, it's not going to go straight through. Once it hits a a, um, a barrier, it's going to tumble. Exactly. I'm so, aware of that, Mark. Mm -hmm. But if you're shooting, go right through that open door on the north end. Where's that bullet going to go? That door is not open. That door is never open. It's locked. <clears throat> My only concern was currently we are evaluating all the officers. We've never done that before. And I wanted to wait until all the evaluations were done, the whole council reviewed the evaluations, and then we proceeded with any other purchases that we might need. That's my only hold up. We would be glad to accept their money, or I would be, but um, we don't need it, but at this time, some evaluations are all over. That's smart box. What do you think, Sherry? How long do you have before you have to buy them? I mean, is it grand um, money? When I talked to Adam, he's, because I told him we wanted to do it, and uh, he said that He's trying to get him to hold them, but he don't know how long they can hold them. I'm assuming said, there's some kind of agency or something that we're going through because of the price. They're military Federal. Issue. It's through the federal, uh, it's federal okay. surplus. And they only go to government. Okay. So we never own. That's a, their inventory is constantly turning over, and M16s is going to be something that's constantly coming in, probably, I would, I would guess. What's the legality on it, Don? Can you help me out? What was the question? On an M16 with on the, if the police department had it. And they and we have a problem at the school and we shoot shoot a ground off or something in the school down the hallway. Same as legality as anywhere else. I mean if you're there defending your town, I mean you're Most departments have on the issue. Uh, yeah. We have police and we have insurance coverage for uh, errors and omissions. If we screw, if somebody screws up somewhere, I mean, can be, we have insurance coverage for that. But we hope you never have to use it. Uh, I don't want to get in car fights anywhere. I mean, how do you know? I'm sitting there shooting the pistol down. Uh, hallway and they've got M16 on the other end and it's pretty hard to flip side is uh, you know, most of the if it's an M16 it's probably going to be fully automatic. No. These aren't? I, the way Adam was talking they're they've been totally rebuilt. I mean, if it's rebuilt, the same thing Stafford has. If they rebuild them with a uh, you know with a semi-automatic feature, I don't think that would be a problem. But if you're, I mean, I don't think you want to hand any anybody a full automatic machine gun unless you're in the military. So I would, I don't want, I'd want to make sure. I know Stafford has some. I think I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah, it's the same one Stafford has. I'm That's pretty sure the, uh, the uh, sheriff. be something that once they purchase they might have had weeks of rifle range practice even months. Yeah and I don't know can they shoot rifles at our range? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have a hundred yard range. I guess I didn't remember what was behind it. It's over to the side. The M16 is a, that a weapon that's designed to be so easy that an idiot can fire it. So, I mean, it won't take very long to get anybody qualified on the M16. Anyone that's handled that knows that. It's Army basics, eight years long, and you learn all about them. So. Yeah, you learn everything, taking it apart. Not anymore. Huh? <laughs> not anymore. Not eight, anymore? Eight weeks. He's eight weeks, but not anymore. <laughs> Like, I think that we ought to accept the uh, fire department's generous offer on this. Anything that would help our emergency services is something that we need to consider for our community. And that's uh, the Sixth Fleet Fire Department Sixth Auxiliary. It's not, third, it's, not, it's not the city right. department, right. it's the auxiliary. Mm -hmm. motion on the table to accept yes. the auxiliary fire department or the fire department auxiliary's donation for the rifles. Sure. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. Being no second, the motion dies for life. Would there be interest on the council's part of having the auxiliary come back after the evaluations are completed and see if they're still willing at that time to give a donation? Yes. I think that's a good idea. So. Mike, is that something? To yep. Fire that, chief support? That, uh, that's all I have. That's all you have? Okay. Yeah. Everybody have a bid tab for the latest bids we had Thursday. I've got some extras if anybody needs any uh, The project overall, part one and part two, are going great. Uh, we're ahead of schedule and within budget, so I think that's what everybody likes to hear. Um, they're estimating the water line section uh, probably mid June, and that'll be done ahead of time the way we're looking at it now. Um, the treatment plant side. Over there, we're looking probably uh, end of June, hopeful, you know, without any hiccups. That contract time actually takes us into August, so we've still got some time on that as well. Um, we just had the competitive bid for the two water wells behind the treatment plant, and those are the two wells that are kind of supposed to replace that well number two that had um, the troubles with the power plant. I've been working with Mel and the the Division of Water Resources to keep well number two on is just emergency standby for fire protection and uh, all the applications have been sent in on that. We just, they're so backed up we haven't heard anything. Um, at this point, um, we got some great bids on the water wells. Clark Well that did all the test wells with Ned out there was a low bidder. At $151,921.15, we had $240,000 in the budget, so that's you know about $60,000 under. If you take that into account with the rest and the fact that we haven't we haven't gone into any contingency yet, we're $286,000 below the numbers we gave you initially on the project. We're doing okay on that aspect. I guess at this point I would ask if we could get a motion to accept the bids for Clark Well for Part 3 at that base bid amount. And that would be pending approval from KDHE, which is the funding agency. 
uh, we've got to have the minutes of the meeting that shows that you guys approve the bids before they'll give us the okay to send down the bid. Yeah, are there any other questions on the project on here on the bid itself? Oh, my question would be on fences and gates, seven thousand three hundred and thirty six dollars. Is that is that we don't have any other fences around any other wells is why I ask. We we chose to put the two fences around there. I mean, they're submersible. They're out there in the open. It's kind of our company policy to protect those wellheads out there. It was a it was a decision we made to put those up. Has this got any uh, anybody looking after this stuff like Ned Marks? Is it in here? Yeah. Michael? Ned's contract isn't in here. We've been working with him and paying out of EVH's contract amount. So, but he's on board to do this? Yes. The design is his. He'll be on site when Brent Clark is out here drilling. Ned's stamp is actually on the plans, the two well plans on EVH's. So from that aspect, we've hired Ned as a consultant on the on the water well design. I'll make a motion to accept the park well equipment. It is $151,911.15. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? I've got a couple of things for John again. Okay. <laughs> Here's your copies of the bill, the original. Okay. And then the Whenever you get the unofficial minutes, I'll send that in to KDHU with okay. the rest of the packet. And when they let us know, we'll have Julianne sign a notice of awards. And then we can get the contract signed. So you need this unofficial <laughs> Right. I won't, you won't be able to sign these because you have to date it. Okay. And then KDHE doesn't want to date it until they give us the okay. So we need the unofficial minutes first. Okay. And once KDH and you, it's the okay to okay. sign. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Shorty sweet. <laughs> yeah. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. on it and we'll have to go through a public publication and uh, send out some notices to uh, lien holders notifying them of what's going on. And we'll have a hearing uh, at a later date. So we just need to adopt this. The hearing should be June 4th. Yeah, that's right. That's your all all the room. Room. Yeah. Oh, okay. We just need a motion to approve it. Yep. Correct motion to approve resolution number 761. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next item I have is uh, uh, we'd advertise for a part time summer position. We had one applicant, uh, which would be Zach Miss, who's worked for us uh, before. So, uh, if you want to look these, I guess we've already, you all know who Zach is or you know, everybody. So, uh, last year he was at $9 an hour and he's asked for $9.30. He can start May 20. When we did the year before, he started when we did it was $9. The first year he was. Oh, I don't remember really what. Did we get him? I thought, I thought I thought there was a raise. Yeah, we gave a raise increase. Yeah, you. up to the nine dollars. Yeah. yeah. From where did we start in that? Well, I was asking. Yeah. I'd 
like to see the applications. Are you saying hand between the camera? We are already going to check the session. How many do you have? That's it. <laughs> Choices are limited. Was it put in paper or one picture did this decision? I'd make a motion for three minutes exactly each session. Second. Okay. Aye. 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 Swimming pool manager. Is there any further discussion? What was the motion? Right now there is a motion. You can start it though. The assistant swimming pool manager. What's the wave girl's name? Teresa. 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 of the motion to approve hiring Teresa Wade as the assistant pool manager. Ain't sure what we approve, but okay. 5-0 motion carried. Okay. Mel? That's my call back. Uh, next item ahead, per uh, Councilman Kevin Davis, Rattlesnake. Oh. Yeah. Does anybody remember what we did on that? We mm -hmm. gave approval to to sign with our concern. Yes. Well, there's some uh, debate there. I guess not debate. The facts are back that it's not a 100% grant. It's a 75-25. And she's got estimates of $25,000. And she said the landowner would uh, match half. Yeah, it'd be six thousand dollars is what the of the twenty-five percent. And she said if we would pay three, the landowner would pay three. And how much? But then the, the landowner is pushing this still? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So we were a little bit misled last time. It's all, yeah. it's all different. Yeah, I know. This is all new to me. Yeah. What? Uh, how? How much are they going to clean? I'm Half gonna, a mile. I'm going to say all the rattlesnake creek on Lloyd the Camels. Right. Which that doesn't eliminate our concern anyway, because anything that makes it there is going to carry everything that's from there out anyway. So 
I don't. Yeah. There's pictures here if anybody wants to look. I don't think that. That's this a little this is what this is the letter she was going to send in in concern of the 150 feet approximate from the city sewer facility was severely damaged, leaving the rattlesnake creek clogged with debris. The debris removal along the stretch of the stream channel is essential to prevent potential flooding of the sewer pond, which now is not concerned because their dikes are so high. I was more concerned about flooding of the town because all our 99% of our storm sewer water goes in there. And they're wanting to clean from like West Street to half a mile from Kitty One. Like I said, that that doesn't leave me any of our problems. Yeah. So Got the grant? Nope. Well, this is her grant application. Right. We gave yeah. John for which we still got to make which I don't. Right. It's different. To me, I don't think that's what we want to do. Okay. Like I said, it doesn't. I mean, I. I agree with Troy. It, that that material is going to come down that creek if we get a flood. Right. You got Mansell and Cornwall yeah, and Fairchild. A lot of wood that's yeah. going to come at it. It's yeah. going to be at that bridge. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have a problem way before it gets to the, the one half mile of clean creek. It's going and to then once it hits the other half mile line, it's going to plug up again anyway. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's going to be wide. I mean, that's going to be a big problem, not just... It's going to be real wide down in Kelsey Bridge. Yeah. I bet you have to set an excavator out here on this bridge and just pull wood out all the long and start cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first Raymond, that's a good question. Yeah. There's her letter. Yep. Are we done with that one yet? Yep. What do you awesome. What do you think about it? Well, like you said, it, you get a half a mile for three thousand dollars if they get the grant. It's one that really doesn't help. Yeah. Now, she's. I think she would if we go ahead and give our concern. Of our water problem that we just don't have funds, maybe the landowner wants to pay that. That's all her in the beginning. All she wanted was the concern from a government. I don't have a problem doing that, but I mean, for us to put funds into it, yeah, I think that's as long as whatever she states in the letter is true, right? We need to remodify yeah, that. Yeah, our, our sewer pond is not vulnerable completely, it's high yeah, completely. It's, no. That's what Mal's theory is. I mean, there would be an issue of some washing or something if it got real bad. Yeah. That's, the that was, go ahead, Bob. The only thing that I can see might might be a problem there is if it, if it does get wide, then we're not going to be able to get the water out of St. John if it rain. You see what I'm saying? Because the ditch is going to be full. Well, that's what Kevin told me, you know, as far as elevation wide, wise, and you guys have been around here a lot longer than I have, and, and during, forget, any trees out there, but a really heavy rain. What's the highest you've ever seen that water out there? To the bottom of the bridge, over the bridge? What's what's well, the highest you've ever seen? It happened in '72, and I don't remember what it was. I seen it a half a mile wide. Yeah, so I, it was within a half mile. Two eighty one, too. So I guess when that happened, I remember out here when yeah, cedar. In '97, it was all the way around the bridge. You couldn't get to the bridge. The bridge was not under. But I'm saying, with even if that's going on out there, if we have that much rain. The in-town infrastructure, we're going to have flooding irregardless of what the rattlesnake is doing out there. I, I don't know as if it would back up in here. I'm, I know when it gets high enough, it's definitely going to start slowing things down. But I'm just saying, if anybody knows what happened during a, another period of real high water, that'd be interesting. So, but my only, you know, if <coughs> excuse me, if you guys were going to back this, I would. I would think we need might want to change this as far as uh, to prevent potential flooding of the sewer pond system. I don't see that really ever being an issue. My concern is if with those trees out there in the creek eventually channel changing and maybe making that bend right there and it's going to start coming to wash issue. Yeah, that's that's what my concern is. I mean, we've got a flapper on our discharge pipe. I mean, I've seen pretty high water out there and we have to really be high. So that. 
That's my only that's concern. That's something we need to have Don look at and write. Or you just I'm just saying that's, that's my concern there. I just want to, don't want to misrepresent right. the city. And if I understood it right, um, the 25% match would have to go through the city, whether the landowner paid it or not. He'd have to pay us, and then we'd have to pay it because it has to something. Well, we don't have a problem with that either. Okay. As as we're not using any of our phones for it. I mean, if the letter helps serve them, prior to it. Our last motion should take care of it, shouldn't it? We can go to that was just for a letter. Of well, that's where we're staying. Yeah. That's so, I mean, we're just deciding not to go anywhere else. Surely we're not going to have to do any more big changes. Yeah, we're not going to find any absolute. However, when we're audited, if we have a check go through and we have um, funds going for something, we probably should have something in the minutes stating that that's been okay. I'll make a motion that we allow the letter to stand, and if the landowner wants to pick up the six thousand dollars, and so be it, as long as it's no expense out of city of St. John. If it has to go through St. John or whatever to, to get their grant, then. They can pay us, and we can pay that for you. However, you want to work it out. Okay. Oh, you can put it so yeah. yeah. I hate to change it. Yeah. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. The only thing that uh, the superintendent's report, uh, Bobby, you brought up last time about the uh, farm ground getting it, you know, getting set up to lease, and we had questions about soil testing and all of that. Uh, I just visited with uh, Jim Gleason a little bit on Crop Quest and kind of got a feeling, you know, get some input from him if that's in his business and everything. And he said he'd be willing to uh, help us on the wordage as far as. Uh, Maybe in a crop rotation and uh, some testing, uh, he's going to work with me on that, and I'll we'll get something together. He said uh, annual uh, soil testing would be a hundred dollars a year. So, so anyway, hopefully maybe next time we'll have that. Thank you. Okay. That's all. Mm. Mel, um, yeah, I misunderstood a. a um, a text earlier today from uh, Trish Coleman regarding a CIP, and I put accidentally put it under new business. We don't need to have it there. Uh, on May 4th, they're going to be having the uh, citywide uh, yard sale, and all she was asking for was to have the uh, barrel put out on 4th and Broadway. We could okay. do that for on them. May 4th? Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay, uh, the first item I have is the KMEA Board of Directors, um, and you had some things in your packet, but the most important one is the back page, <clears throat> and it shows KMEA, by the way, Kansas Municipal Electric Association, Energy, Energy Association, <laughs> Agency, Agency. Um, Mel has been our number one and number two person and then Kevin has been all, our alternate. The only one that's up right now and needs to be um, redesignated is the number one. So you can either have Mel do it again or if one of you guys would like to be the designated person. We just I'll need make to make a keep Mel doing. He's done an excellent job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's been a motion and a second to retain Mel Chesborough as the as a director on the Kansas Municipal Energy Agency Board of Directors. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Sorry, Motion no. carried. You. <laughs> <laughs> you knew how that was going to look at it. Yeah, you're laughing, Troy. You forgot what happened last time. <laughs> hey, I done got burnt once. <laughs> That's the reason I didn't screw around. Hurry up, get the motion on the table. <laughs> okay. The next thing is uh, the government body training. In your packets, you had a, a little pamphlet from um, the league. Here's just black and white. It looks something like this. 
Um, so it shows the times that there are um, conferences and, and uh, classes. They highly recommend this for every councilman to ever go to. Yeah, it should be in your back page. I think I've been to two. No, you. I don't think you've been to this. Oh. I think you've been to the uh, league conference. Oh. This is actually just set up for councilmen and mayors. This is at Topeka, I believe. Where am I saying that? Would you like to Well, and or, yes. Um, I'll let Don tell you another option, or you could do both. City of Stafford uh, approach, was approached after this thing came out. Uh, Don Ozenbaugh used to work for the league for the last 10, 15 years. He is now uh, doing consulting work. He works for a group called uh, Kansas Financial. I don't know. It's a it's a it's a consulting company. But he offered to come out to Stafford to do a training for them for a couple hundred bucks. Uh, my suggestion with them was, well, maybe we could get the, uh, the two councils together and just have a joint training and split the couple hundred bucks and and everybody could have. Uh, uh, it may it be most of a question and answer period on effective government. So I threw that out there as an alternative to that. It would be at your doorstep and, and it would be in. So uh, that's an alternative to this training if you'd like to do that. Would there be any, I mean, would he basically tell us the same stuff? I think he's open for here? us to tell him what yeah, we he'll, want he'll to do. He'll go over any subject you want to do. And I would certainly recommend that you do the Kansas Open Meetings Act, the Kansas Open Records Act, and then um, constitutional home rule, as well as if, um, you know, he does have, on this, it has ordinances and, and voting. So, well, a couple hundred bucks would be a lot cheaper than we yeah, definitely. I'm not saying that it would totally replace this. But it would probably give you some good information. No, I would if recommend would the, new, the new council members and the new mayor mm -hmm. would be very helpful for you to attend the league meetings and become involved in that and, and learn their programs and learn what they have to offer. Uh, but for everybody else who would like a quick catch up and a question and answer, Don probably is very, very knowledgeable in finance, particularly. Uh, he was a finance director at Derby, he worked at Halstead before that. And he worked, uh, I don't know if you read the Don Ozenbaugh column in the Kansas Government Journal, he was in there uh, once a month traveling to various cities. His responsibility was finance, but also uh, outreach for the league. So, I mean, so he does have very good credentials. So, it's up to you. Okay. Do we need a bush on um, Yeah, if we're going to extend funds, we'll probably do. And on this, I mean, you just need to let me know who would like to go so I can make registration and reservations. You are? Yes. Okay. Yep, 10 vote days. Um, I mean, the, no. first deal, the first day kind of looks to me like in a mayor's deal, basically. There's some things that could be otherwise, but I think you'd probably be all right. Just going to Saturdays. I said, Mayor, I'll do a three page essay report. <laughs> 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 I don't know if I remember how to do one of those in a lot of years. <laughs> but I can definitely report Well, that. I'm going to say that deal with Blake Stafford and wouldn't do that deal. So. I'd like to attend this. And, uh, I just need to clear, make sure that I can get the time off okay. for it as well. So maybe let me know by the end of this week so I yeah. can get on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then am I hearing that the rest of the council is interested in joining with Stafford and having the consultant come in and? Since it would be an open meeting, you would have to give notice that you're going to meet. We'll have to pick out a place and time. I 
notice will have to go out for probably a week. Still interested? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I would be looking for a motion to set an, an open meeting to joint with Stafford. Joint with since, we do, since we don't know the date, though, I mean, can we just do basically a general consensus and then make the motion once we kind of figure a date well, out? You're only talking a hundred bucks. I mean, John will have, or a couple, you know, maybe a hundred, 150 bucks in most of talking. So John would have the authority to anybody within their budget to do it. So if you want to just tell her, give her consensus to direct her, that'd be fine. Eating? That's my consensus. Yeah, <laughs> We need to elect the president of the council. I'll make a motion to elect Kevin Davis because he's been here the longest. Second. Second. Have a motion and a second to elect Kevin Davis as president of the city council. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Opposed. <laughs> four, four, one against. Yeah, there is. Okay, I'll, I'll be getting um, new signature cards, so I'll be calling you guys, both of you, oh, too. Mark and no, oh. you, President and Mayor. A new signature card? Yeah. Oh, a piece of sign the check? Yes. It's local bank, you'll be honest. It's going to mark your X. Yeah, it's a fancy one. Okay, we have a request from the superintendent to go into a five-minute executive session to further discuss the All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, there is motion on the table to revoke the motion to hire Connie Clausen. Can we use the term withdraw? Withdraw, sorry, to, yes. Mm -hmm. Withdraw the motion to hire Connie Clausen as the pool manager with the requirement that she live in the city. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. I'll move to hire Connie Clausen. Manager. There's been a motion from Kevin Davis to hire Tony Clausen as pool manager. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? No. I'd like to have some more discussion. Okay. If if you're going to do that to one person, are you going to, and, and you're going to restructure that deal for the half of in town? Are you going to do it for all city employees? It's already that way for city employees. We just haven't followed it. Mm -hmm. Is it that way for city employees? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Your Honor. It's it's a three mile limit, isn't it? Five? I can't remember. Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah that three mile ago. is is in effect probably for everybody, right? Yes. Whether it's pool well, manager it's, or city It's not in effect though. Yes, it is. Not where it, one city employee lives right now. Right. We. Well, that's because it keeps getting overruled. Yeah, that was voted on. That's what I would keep saying if, we gonna, if we're not going to follow them, then get them off the books. Yeah. So it sounds like somewhere in the near future we need to look at the employee policy and procedures manual and with the possibility of making some revisions. I think it's a good choice. Yeah. We got we got some. Yeah. We're still in pickle. Yeah, we, we have issues. <laughs> <laughs> One meeting ain't going to cure all them. Nope. <laughs> okay, John, if you can make a note, um, probably the second meeting in May, come back and start taking personnel policy a section at a time. Now, we are still working on the police manual. Okay. No, where was that? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, we went to discussion. Is there any further discussion? Okay, 
Okay, I have a motion and a second to hire Connie Clausen as full manager. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? No. no. Bob and Jerry, no. Not unless we get it sorted out, but that's not fair. We blame both ends of stick to it. I'm sorry. Okay. Are we directing the clerk to run an advertisement again? Okay. And make it specific on how it wants to be. Usually we have a very small ad to save expenses and they can pick up a job description and contract here. So you guys need to make some, if you're going to make a change, you need to make a change in the policy. If you, Because right now the contract and the job description does not say they have to live in St. John. Are they considered a city employee? The, the, the other stipulation is to full time city employees. We've had lifeguards live outside the city before. Clara Burt Larned even. Yeah, Luke was I think one year he was assistant manager and he was living in the great big if I recall. Okay, we're I wish I would have known that. I'm not against the restrictions. I just want a pool manager for yeah. May. Well, yeah, we need a pool manager. We can make all the adjustments later. Let's just can you want to get down if you can? No, I'm no, not changing. He can just make, make another motion. Make her reapply. We need, to, we need to do something, though. If we're going to restructure it, we're going to have to change it. I think I you're in a, a short term period of time to restructure the policy before you can advertise again. Okay. The current policy reads that full time city employees must reside within, within the city th limits. Within three miles of the city limits. Okay. I question that. Isn't isn't it up to council's discretion? I think that was added so in. Far, I think know. that was added <laughs> into the policy a while back. Yeah. But I don't have the manual in front of me, so. Uh, but that's for full time. I think it was a case by case, some assumption to that effect. You know, that's they're going to look at each one. Yeah. Like I say, it doesn't make any difference to me, but it needs to be fair. The reason I'm making my point. We've never, whether they're lifeguards or assistant managers or anything, it's never been questioned before. But, you know, she lived in town last year. Joe's always lived in town. Luke lived out of town. We've got guards that live who knows where. So, the only thing I would say is if if, go back to what I said earlier. If we put this restriction on, you have to live in town. And she said, I'm not going to live in town. And we don't have any other applicants. We don't have pool manager. We're in an open session. So, but, you know, Don said we couldn't put that restriction on as of, as of what we have in place right now. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the council's direction has been that we run the app, correct? Mm -hmm. At this point. Okay. So we will revisit it at the next council meeting. Is there any other new business? Okay, old business. Library funding. Joshua's going to come back at some point, so I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh,